So we're getting into um, our brand new heavy for the month of uh, September. As I said, in our brand new heavy, uh, we are celebrating and we are joined uh, by quite a dynamic young man in the studio for today. In our, in our brand new heavy, we celebrate a young person in South Africa, 35 years and below, uh, who is doing the things in their industry. And for today, we are joined by uh, Lindo Kutle Munisi. Uh, who is an entrepreneur uh, just to understand you know what's going on in his business you know some of uh, you know hardware i believe and i think some property as well and we're going to be understanding the journey and also at the same time where he wants to go so i think uh, just to get things rolling uh, lindo thank you so much uh, you know for being with us today um you heard me on the buffalo index talking about the screwdrivers yes. Right. I think it only works well for you to give us what are the basics. If I am a man, if you're a person who just wants to have like a basic toolbox at your house, right? Um, what you know? What are what are some of the basics that you recommend that people should have? What are, what are, what the starter pack? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thank you very much for having me. Really, really appreciate. Um. So obviously, I've had um. You know the Buffalo Index, and you you are spot on. I think. As to begin with, every every person, let, let's not even say every man or every woman, but every human being needs to have like the basic, basic, you know, DIY tools or a toolbox, as we call it. And yeah. we always encourage that. I mean, in our in our hardware spaces, when someone comes through, we always encourage that you must have something. Because I mean, if your 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 cupboard door gets loose on the screws, you can't now be you know. Uh, struggling on what to do or use a knife or whatnot. Yeah. So you need to have a set of scr uh, screwdrivers, the right sizes, the flats, the star. Yeah. You need to have, you know, your basics, your screwdrivers, very important, the pliers, a hammer, um, uh, uh, you know, a pop john if you want to go now, you yeah. know, heavy duty and stuff. A little stronger there. A, a little, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, we, we there are some basics that you can have. A screwdriver is very important. Um, your hammer, your plier, very, very important. So those are the type of things that you can have in the house. And then if you need to do a little bit of gardening here and there, you can have, you know, your shovel, you can have your, just to cut some grass. Sometimes grass grows in, even when you are using, you've got your, what's this, tiles, the, the paving, Grass just has a way of coming out. You need mm. something to just cut it out. So have the basics of the basic uh, in the house to just sort out some stuff. Okay, cool. <laughs> so now that we know the basics, uh, maybe we can get into how you got into actually selling, uh, yeah. you know, the basics um, and, uh, you know, hardware. And I think we spoke earlier about property, etc. Yes, yes. um, you know, for, for people that are... Uh, uh, for, uh, I wish people were here in studio with us uh, because he's actually wearing a shirt. It's oh, yes. got uh, the name of the brand, <laughs> Andura Hardware, um, on it. And you recently opened your third shop, oh, third one, yes. um, you know, recently. You know, and I think that's actually amazing. You know, so firstly, how old are you, right? And then secondly, uh, maybe you could give us a little bit of insight into Andura as a, as a business. Yes. So I'm 30 years old. Yep. Um, 30 years old, turning 31. Uh, very soon enough in the next couple of months. Yeah. Um, I still fall within the youth. Yes. I heard you were no, saying. Listen, listen, we're, we're, we're both in the youth. We're, we're, we're fighting. You know, yeah. to stay in the youth, in just the youth to category. remain here. But yeah. Um, and then it's 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 quite an amazing thing for us to be doing this at mm. you know at this level because I mean the space that I'm in is not a sexy type of business where you can be flamboyant and be happy and all. It's a hardware business. Yeah. Um, it's a property space. It's the built environment space. Yeah. Um. But how many young people are we getting into the space and how many are we inspiring to come into the space? So that's where I will begin. And my journey begins, obviously, in the property space. So we run a, 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 a company called After 12 Properties in which we are building rental units within the townships, yep. basically, you know, op uh, opening up that space and ensuring that as we get an influx of people coming into the township, we, there needs to be enough accommodation for people to live in. So what we then did while we were busy building our rental units, we realized that there is a challenge that we faced while we were building the rental units of getting the material closer to us, mm. uh, uh, to our site. Uh, every time we had to go and get the building materials, get the DIY tools, we have to pay an exorbitant am amount of money to go into the bigger hardware stores far away and for them to bring the products here where we are building. So we thought as soon as we are done with 
you know, the, the, the rental units that we're building, why not just take, you know, the rental income and the investments that we're making, you know, we'll be getting and get into the hardware space now, solving exactly the problem we're facing to say we have a problem where of getting the products to us yeah. where we are building. So now we are going to build the, pro the, the, the hardware stores in the township so that we solve the problems that people are facing when they need to build their rental units. So that's how the hardware space um, was, idea basically came about to say we need to just bring hardware stores closer to the people where they need them. So Andura Hardware is a retailer of hardware items, DIY tools and building materials focusing strictly on the township. And we do it so well that it, it, it will speak about the business model as we go forward. But we are basically focusing on the township, your mini hardware stores within the township so that people can get what they need close by and they can just take a wheelbarrow and walk into a hardware store without going the extra mile to pay exorbitant amount of money to just mm. get two bags of cement. So we are basically just bringing the convenience in the township. Okay, cool. Uh, that That's actually, you know, very good. And I like the fact that um, the, you've, you've already mentioned, you know, the two businesses. Uh, that you're involved in and yeah. you know and you telling the journey you actually identify uh, the problem that you faced yeah. that forced you to get into uh, the second business and uh, and I like that a lot how long has it been in terms of the hardware or yeah the well, actually both of them yeah yeah, both of them. So um, I'll start with the hardware because it's quite interesting. We are actually turning two years now in October. We are celebrating our two years anniversary. Ooh, so it's a COVID um, business. <laughs> it's actually a COVID <laughs> business. It's actually a COVID business. I like yeah. that you mentioned that because we started Andorra Hardware at the peak of the pandemic. Yeah. Where, and we did, decided to, 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 because there were so many challenges that people were facing and you couldn't go. Some of the hardware stores were closed. Like the bigger hardware stores were closed. You couldn't access material. You couldn't access a cement. There was a shortage of, you know, from the suppliers and whatnot and hardware stores were closed. And we looked at that. We're like, this is a problem. And we decided to put everything together and, and, and just start that. So it's, it's a COVID business. They started during the peak of the pandemic mm -hmm. and um, we just ro rolled it and rolled it. And now we're starting with the first one, went to the second one in the following year. And then now we're on the third one and we're just trying to go as much as, as, as we can. And people will be seeing us in, 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 in the township near them in the future. In terms of after 12 properties and the properties we are rolling out, we've got like five properties yeah. and 15 rental units because the, how we're doing it there is we get the property and one that has a big enough space for us to build rental units because we're also trying to bring convenience in the township, making sure that there are back rooms, there are cottages um, and there are you know, apartments here and there for the different tastes and the different levels of people the lifestyle that people want to live so we provide all of that using the five properties and we are looking into expanding uh going more so that business has been running since 2018 um it should be turning four years or uh, close to five years um right now so two years at and of andura hardware um and then like four years of uh, after 12 properties okay cool so i'm doing some quick maths here um if you're turning 31 this year yeah. then it means you you started the first business when you were what um 27 26 turning 27 somewhere there um what what was what was happening before the properties business did you ever work in corporate did you were yeah. you always a business person uh, did you just study until you were 26 what was happening before uh, you got into the properties uh, business yeah there's there's a lot that was happening before that um obviously i i i started i went to university i studied something totally different and yeah. totally where, where unrelated i went to tut, TUT the okay. Tswana university of technology i was there 2011 2012 2013 in fact i was i was studying journalism so yeah. i studied journalism i worked as a journalist uh for sapc i've worked for enca i've worked for an7 i yeah. know the Kuptas, we can't mention much <laughs> <laughs> but i did work uh, for an and seven as a journalist there field journalist and whatnot but i think for me it was always about empowering of people i think all that i always want to do is to empower people i always want to do something that is related to empowering people and as i was continuing with my journey in, in my career um i i obviously the stories that i was covering it wouldn't be crime and all these other things it would always be general news on on, on touching on the lives of people so that was when I realized that actually what is what makes me happy is when I'm 
wherever I exist, someone's life is being empowered. So I left journalism. 2015, I decided to resign from ENCA and I went strictly to business. I was 23 years old, I think, 23, going to 24 and stuff. Um, and I started a company um, where we were manufacturing graduation attires. Ooh, um, okay. Graduation attires, we were manufacturing at our peak, uh, 2015, 2016, 2017. Um, we had like 10 employees and a number of agents in all universities. Um, at VETS, we had um, an agent here that was knocking on people's doors and posting on social media that you will never this graduation. Here's where you get your graduation attires at UJ, all other institutions, because we knew which type of regalia they, they wear, which type of colors for each faculty and whatnot. So we were running that business quite, I was still young. So, and then, <laughs> and then something happened and that business died. <laughs> Just yeah. before you ask me, so where's that business now? Yeah. That business died. Um, and I had to go back to yeah. look for a job because <laughs> uh, it was really that tough. But luckily I had the qualification, I had the, the skills. So I went into PR and communication, worked in PR and communication, but always the, the, the entrepreneurial bug always, you know, beat me. So I was like, okay, I need, cause I can't run away from all these voices of me having to empower people and create jobs and, you know, build communities and all. So I ha had to now leave that job again, mm -hmm. um, in which I worked there for like three, and a half years and then i went back now full time again into entrepreneurship starting off with the rental units with the property space um from the property then the andura hardware was born and i think i'm quite happy <laughs> in the hardware space <laughs> that's actually quite a, that's actually quite a deep journey um you know if we if, if i think about it because chronologically i'm thinking you know you go to university uh two or three years you said 2011 to 2013 yeah. tut study journalism get out of that get into the field, uh, SABC, ENCA, and mm. the like, and then you quit in 2015, uh, then you run the graduation, uh, yeah. the graduation until attire business until 2017. You quit that, uh, no, fine. I won't say you quit that, it quit you in in, 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 in a yeah. way. Um, and then uh, you get into PR. Yes, PR communication. Yeah, yeah, then you leave PR, then you decide, okay, fine, I'm going to go into photography. Mm. Yeah, that's quite a, that, yeah, that's quite a journey. Interested in the childhood aspect, right. right? Before you get to TUT, um, I'm I'm guessing that what you call this that you grew up in Gauteng. No, actually, I'm oh, from really? I'm from Pumalanga. I'm okay. from um, a village called Tantonald, um, and then later moved to a another village called Lothe, which all fall under Ermelo. Mm. So I'm from Ermelo in Pumalanga. Mm. That's where I grew up. Um, uh, with my single parent, obviously my mom, mm. um, and my two siblings. So I'm from Pumalang. I'm not from Gauteng. Okay. I, I, I go when when people go on holiday, I go home. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I'm trying to think. Ermelo, I think I've been there before, sort of close to Middleburg. Yes, yes. You just pass Middleburg and just go straight down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I remember the what you call this. Uh, I remember the area. That's actually interesting. And so, okay, cool. What makes you, given where you grew up, yeah. and then you moved, you obviously moved to Joburg at some point, yeah. but you know, you went north and then you came back because you went to TUT and then you sort of came back. Yeah. Um, at what point do you decide that um, where you want to focus your business attention is in the township? Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm interesting I'm interested question. in that yeah. because someone could have said, No, I want to go back to my village and you know build there or yeah. you know, all of these things. Yeah. A lot of people want to be in Santon, for yes. example. Others want to go back home to where they were raised, but you decided that okay, fine, the township is where uh the opportunity is. Absolutely. So and, and it's an interesting question. I love that because that's that's one of the things that I had to look at. Because most of our my my businesses that I've worked in and things that I've touched on, it's really unapologetically and unapologetically strictly township. Mm. Cause, and and the reason for that and not village is because I think for me, um, having lived the life that I lived in a village, cause it's like when I say village, I'm not you know trying to, yeah. it's a real 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 village. So, 
getting into a township for me was a big upgrade. It's still a big upgrade mm. to get into the township space. People, people, you know, the way people talk, the way people move, the, the way people do things. Um, and I remember there was a time when I had to decide to either move and live in a more suburban area myself because I could you, at some point, you know, afford to go and live there. And I was like, you know what? I love this, man. I love the vibe around here. Um, I love, and, and, and that's, my mind has always been, you know, um, centered around, there's more, like township is a gold mine. Mm. In terms of business, township is a gold mine. Even everyone is now looking into what can we do within the township. So um, to answer just your question, township for me, it was to say, this is a good space. Business-wise, it's a mm. gold mine, but also in terms of, the things that we want to change about this country, the people that needs to be empowered, they're there in the township. We need to change a lot of things. The spatial planning in terms of my property uh, business now, we're looking into how did people get so, you know, flocking into townships? How, how does that happen? What can we do within the township to ensure that people are, are getting the services that they would want from your more affluent areas how what can we do can we build more properties that are more you know mm. nicer you know more secured more safe you know more beautiful and and, and and inhabitable so we're trying to bring that into the township so our businesses is to try to ensure that we bring convenience within the township and also empower the township so that people those who want to move from village township and then more suburb areas more sent in they, they they can go through that journey which is a journey that i've decided i want to walk um from village to township and then <laughs> we'll see how how things go as, as time goes on no i i like that very much uh, we i i think maybe we'll have uh, one more question before we before we take a break um you know for for, for for this part but one of the things i find very interesting and i think we might have to revisit it ourselves because we've explored uh, the township economy on many occasions, yeah. you know, on this uh, on this program, and it's exactly like what you said. There is huge opportunity, uh, you know, in that space. Two weeks ago, uh, we had a young lady who runs a um, student accommodation business, you know, um, you know, in the township. She helps landlords to find students, nice. um, you know, and. You know she's she's thriving i met her because she's part of a telecom incubator program mm -hmm. right that's how dope this business is you know the likes of telecom they yeah. they took note and said no what this young lady is doing needs to be supported yeah. etc so uh, i'm definitely feeling you there before we take a break structure right because yeah. there's a lot going on in your life right um i'm very interested to understand the people that you have around yeah. you uh because on two fronts right firstly it's because right now i can imagine that you've just opened your your what you call this your third shop yes you also have a property business you must be very busy right mm -hmm. so you know what type of people do you have around you you know that structure yeah. and also at the same time i can imagine that you know the first time that you quit and decided you're going to be an entrepreneur there were people that you, you around you that were that you're either consulting or were saying, ha, ah, you know, that's either because either people say, Oh, that's a brilliant idea, or they're like, you know, why are you leaving, you know, these yeah. great jobs, etc. So just talk to us about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a great, brilliant question. So the support structure, I think, um, from my family side, I, I think I've got a very supportive family. Um, from my mom's side, my mom's still alive. Um, so she she she's very supportive uh, of everything that I, I, I decide to do because, you know, as um, I'm, I'm one person that, you know, takes the decision, but before doing that, I do consult to say, I'm thinking of, at 23, I'm deciding, I'm thinking of quitting my job. <laughs> it's not every parent that will say, okay, but also because they know that I, I'm, I'm, I'm a different type of a person mm -hmm. uh, comparing to my peers my siblings you know all those but they know that as soon as i've made up my mind on something yeah. i have thought about it i've done my research so mm -hmm. i do have a good support structure uh, in terms of that so i i, I research on something before i do it mm -hmm. um and when i do it when i communicate to people they know that okay maybe he thought about it um he'll be fine but if there are hiccups there 
let's just open the door uh, for him to come back and, 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 and consult. So I do have uh, very good people around me that are supportive. Um, mentors as well, very important. Um, it's important to have someone that you can always go to to ask for guidance. I find that for me, it's quite tricky because um, it's not it's not a lot of times where I have to go to somebody more older, more business, you know, but I do have those type of people that okay. are just a WhatsApp away to say, hey, I'm thinking of getting into this. Hey, what do you need? How can we support you? How can we do this? And, and it's always me to say, yeah, I'm just alerting you. I'm not saying, you know, bring in <laughs> <laughs> money. Because yeah. I know business, sometimes we, we, we run these businesses and you think three hardware stores, there must be some big money is coming from outside, from elsewhere. No, actually, it's mm. coming from me. Mm. Everything is coming from me. <laughs> it's coming yeah. from us as the team. Um, and I've learned um, one of the beautiful skills in business to be able to trust the people that you bring on board. Mm. So I've got a very capable team, a team of managers that are the ones that are scouting the area, scouting the people, scouting the, you know, the, the type of business, the suppliers, who do we speak to? So I don't even have to do anything. I actually sit in my office and they run the thing and I trust them to be able to do that. So I've got a very good and supportive um, structure in terms of the team, um, very supportive uh, structure in terms of the family. So I'm, 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 I'm lucky. It's not everyone that can be yes. this lucky. So I've got a good team. I've got good family to support me. No, lucky indeed. It's always great to have, um, you know, people around you that can keep you grounded, people that can support you and uh, people that will be there as you pursue, uh, you know, the things, you know, that you want to be doing. You know, this particular case, property and, you know, um, the hardware business and obviously all the career changes that happened, um, you know, along the way. So we are in conversation with uh, Lilo Kutle, um, Nisi, who is uh, an entrepreneur, uh, who is giving us some insight into the business and, you know, how he came up, um, you know, to the world of entrepreneurship. There always seems to be a, a yearning, um, you know, in him to get into this. And uh, he was also telling us how he's decided deliberately uh, to focus on the township market because he believes uh, that there is a huge opportunity you know in that particular market and also at the same time you know some of the teachings and learnings uh, that he had uh, you know growing up over in Pumalanga. We're going to take a quick break and then on the other side of this we will be getting into a little bit um, you know around you know where uh, Lindo decides uh, you know or wants to go in terms of business and anything else that he has uh, going on. So that's it. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back on the other side of this. Area code. We're speaking all things. What's your parents? Ridiculous thing they've ever asked yeah. you to do. My yeah. mother actually asked Interesting. me to pass her. <laughs> okay. So do you want to speak or not? <laughs> huh? I do a little now okay, that cool. I'm here. Come. Come, on. Come through. You, know, you Come just through. wanted me to say yes. Yes. Because it's just another voice to be like you know where did you find this person yes yes so and, what, and what and what do you and what do you does. think of his hustle that's it mm. yeah just oh, you also asked me a question yeah i'm just asking a question of you know what where, where did you find this guy mm. so we are in conversation as i said it's our brand new heavy week and we are talking to uh lindo kutem nisi who is an entrepreneur and uh, we just came uh, before the break, just talking a little bit, um, you know, around his journey, his life and, uh, you know, how um, he actually got into business and where he is now. But right now I wanted to, to turn uh, the focus just a little bit, you know, to uh, one of our producers that is Lindley um cb who is uh, what do you call this uh she's been with us for a number of years and she actually is the one who suggested you know to say guys there's this guy you know who's running a bunch of hardware shops and i think you know he would be a great suggestion so for me it's just two things right because obviously um you know slee knows uh, lindo so for me it's two things firstly where did you find you know this person and then secondly what do you think of his hustle um, we met on LinkedIn. Um, He's LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is working. It's definitely working. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely working for people that want LinkedIn to work for them. Yeah. Yeah. So we met on LinkedIn. Um, I host seminars on the side uh, with regards to property. And I was looking for someone who was doing something different in the property space, you know. And it was interesting for me 
to meet Lindo because Lindo, you know how all of us are trying to leave the township because we want to be in the city, we want to be in the suburbs. And then I met someone who's doing the property investing that we're interested in knowing about, but he's going back to the township. Oh. So that was different. Yeah, yeah. It was a story that people needed to hear about. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. No, no, no. Thank you so much. We just had to hear, you know, that, uh, you know, that origin story because um, I remember when we were looking for guests for this show, Lindo, it, it, I think one of the things that uh, we we often talk, at least in a corporate sense, yeah, right, we often talk about um, mentors, we also talk about sponsors, mm -hmm. right, the people that uh, advocate on your behalf, even when you're not in the room, yeah. right, and uh, it's always great to hear that voice, you know, of, uh, you know, that other voice. Um, you know, just around, you know, uh, people from that point of view. So at least it sounds like things are going well, you know, in terms of how you're marketing yourself, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, branding, you know, that type of thing. And I like the fact that even, you know, Slee had to ask the question to be like, you know, the fact that you've decided that you're going to focus specific uh, on the on the township. I'm glad that I'm not the only one who, you know, who's found that to be, you know, quite an, um, you know, quite an interesting thing. Yeah. So right now, where things are, you're in business. Other businesses, we understand that you've just opened the what do you call this, the third one. But because it's a business platform, we have to ask: yeah. Are you making money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's the interesting one. Um, I will answer it. Yeah. And then before that, I want to go back to the in the, 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 the part about the marketing and the you know how we are communicating um and, and the fact that she mentioned the fact of LinkedIn, which I find that young people need to find a way to ensure that they communicate what they do and they communicate to the right people. Mm -hmm. I'm not the type of person that's now trying to be known and seen as the most flamboyant and the, the money because the money could be coming in yeah. and now I'm seen to be, you know, I, you need to communicate at the level that you want to be perceived and the level that you are actually trying to get yourself to. That's why I, I hear you, you're calling me Lindo Gushe and Lindo Miss, which is my name. I appreciate it. But I've had to, because of where my journey is going, I needed to simplify it for people to be able to call me, whether you are vendor, you are baby, you are Africans and whatnot, Lindo. Mm. So it's Lindo. Mm. So that everyone, Brandy. yeah, branding. So it yeah. starts there. And how do I get that right? It's because I'm a journalist by profession yeah. and I've done PR, PR I've done yes, communication. Yes, yes, yes. So now I get into the most boring part of business, which is real estate and uh, uh, hardware stores. But I'm bringing all that branding and the communication aspect into it, which is very helpful, which is ensuring that we communicate what our intentions are. And for us, I, I know people call it a business. I call it a vision. We are running a vision mm -hmm. and we are bringing people into the vision. So are we making money? I can, I can, I can definitely say, um, they always say in business that the first three years is probably the hardest because yeah. you, the, in the first three years you break even, um, and that's, I think that's where we are. We are, we are breaking even. Okay. I think we're at the left, uh, the point where we are breaking even. I'm proud to say that ever since we started in the peak of the pandemic, we've never missed salaries. Mm. We've never missed salaries. We've never missed our financial obligations. We've never missed our rent. We've never missed any, you know, uh, uh, financial obligations that we have as a business. And we've got a number of those. So that for me is a blessing to be able to continuously stock the product, bring it into the shop, sell it to people and, you know, um, uh, be able to cover the finances that you are covering mm. but also um it, it's helpful for us to grow as a business because if we were not making any income we wouldn't be able to open the second one the third one the mm. fourth one that is coming because we are really really working towards uh rolling out these hardware stores in many different townships because we are really focusing on bringing hardware stores to the, the township people and remote areas we've now incorporated the the the, the remote areas type of focus because we realize that there are many areas like Limpopo for instance Limpopo people are building houses there yeah, yeah. like they're uh, really seen, building serious houses I've in Limpopo it, yeah. but most of them when they come through to our hardware stores here in the township in Gauteng they say guys come on man they're at home I'm struggling I'm even thinking of buying your 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 packets of paint here and travel with them to Limpopo because there's no hardware there so people have to travel there. So now we are getting that challenge to say, 
we need to look into the township, but also look into the remote areas like villages and whatnot. So it's part of the strategy that we're looking at now to say, how do we expand and go forward? So yeah, uh, we are definitely breaking even. We yeah. are able to cover our uh, working, you know, operating expenses. And that is a blessing. We, it's all thanks to our customers and the people that support us um, from, from the communities that we serve in. Mm. No, no, I think it's a very important point um, on two fronts. Firstly, um, I always feel like as black people, we don't have enough conversations about money, yeah. right? Just as a whole, I mean, we, we just need to educate um, each other. And sometimes it's not even about the specifics of, you know, tell us, tell us how much money you make. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just to say that, um, to show people that, you know, you started a business and, you know, the business has gotten to a stage where you're using the money that you're making from trading to actually grow, yeah. open one branch after another. The fact that you haven't been able, you haven't missed salaries. Those are very important things because a lot of people tend to start businesses as a side hustle mm. and it stays in that side, side hustle lane for a long time uh, because it's not able to sustain you. Yeah. So, you know, to show people that um, it is possible, you know, even at the height of COVID to start a business and it to become sustainable, you know, is always great, um, you know, from that point of view. Going forward then, right, we've got property, uh, we've got uh, the hardware business yeah. now. And in the past, there was also a graduation um, attire business. What's next in the piece? Is it... Uh, deepening, you know, these two businesses that you have now and expanding this, or are there other areas that you want to get into? Absolutely, that's a, that's a good one. And it's something that I always um, ask myself, because one of the things is that, remember, I, I, I'm, I'm a journalist by profession. I could have chosen something that is in line and related to journalism. I could have chosen something that is in line with PR and marketing, because that's the space that is related to media. Mm -hmm. But I've chosen something totally different, because probably I'll call it a calling. I've been called into a space that serves people in a space that um, serves to empower people. So I think um, in this stage of my life, I think I can't really say where my business, where I'm going to go in terms of business, but I know that I'm an entrepreneur yeah. and not a businessman. Yeah. So there's a difference in my mind, at least yeah. on that mm. to say you're an entrepreneur. All you do is focus on anything and everything that is, is 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 in line with where the country is going or where the world is going mm. you 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 tap into that and ensure that you bring in people that can manage that and run that that's why we speak about property but there's nothing much that i'm doing on property mm. I'm, I'm really not doing anything because we build that thing it's there it's running on its own we get people to manage it we get people they do that my focus now is on the hardware space mm. focus is on the hardware space and i think that is a space that i'm going to focus more on because it has a direct impact and a direct um you know it, it falls right into what i'm trying to do mine in my mind every time i just want to build communities i want to uh, empower people i want to change lives and create jobs that is what i want to do mm. so a business that is helping me to be able to do that the building of communities, I'm able to do that by building hardware, bringing hardware stores closer to the people so that people can build their homes, build their community and whatnot. Yeah. Changing lives. We, we, we just had a, a, a donation that we made as a hardware store now. As small as we are, we are already rolling out our Changing Lives initiative to say if someone is building a house for a, a, a destitute family, we come through, we supply them with, we donate some of the products, we donate some of the, you know, paint and whatnot and whatnot. We, we've done that. Um, we've just recently started that donating paint. And then there's the creation of jobs. I've just mentioned that we've got a very brilliant, capable team that is running our hardware stores. Um, we cont con continuously, every time we open a hardware store, obviously we'll be hiring people. So the creation of jobs, very important for me. And then the inspiring. I just want to be the guy that inspires people. I just want to be the guy that, you know, people can look up to and say, this guy, leave the poverty that I grew up in. <laughs> leave that. But this is a guy that we saw hustling. We saw building things. We saw doing things that actually um, are inspirational. So I just want to inspire. And I think in the next journey of my life, I will focus on those four things. Okay. Build communities, change yeah. lives, create jobs, and inspire. All right. So any business that can help me do that, I'll be tapping You'll into be that tapping business. Into that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Before we let you go, it's two things. Firstly, um, 
I'm not sure whether you want to share or not, but uh, you know, uh, have you gotten to a stage where you have kids yet? Yes, I do. I have I have two beautiful kids. Uh, um, I have two beautiful kids, a daughter and a son. Yeah. A daughter and a son. Yeah. And uh, I think the question on this one is about um, would you, and let's say it's you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, and they say, Dad, we want to get into business. Mm. You know, would you support them getting into business? Or would whatever struggles you've had starting your businesses say, no, I don't want my kids to struggle like that? Mm. Interesting. That's a, that's a brilliant question. Um, obviously, the way I think about, you know, raising my kids and building the life that I'm trying to get to and the, my kids are trying to get to, I can't impose on, on, on how they do things. I lo- I'm a reader. I love reading books. Mm. I read books. Yeah. Like my daughter now is, so when my daughter was growing up and she's six now, I used to read books to her. Yeah. Like read books every night. I, mean, I still, now she, she's six and strangely she's able to read her own books now. Yeah. She steps into my home office and she's got a, 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 a space for her books. Yeah. So she reads books. But I'm finding that now actually she learns more by watching videos. Yeah. So yeah. by watching the videos, she, you know, her English articulation, I'm, I'm, I only started speaking English when I came to Gauteng, which was yeah. like in 2010, 2011. So she speaks English. So I think I can impose on the journey that they need to take, mm-hmm. but I will be there to support whatever journey that they take. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can, I, I, the way I would have groomed them is I'll be able to trust them to take the decisions that they are taking. My son on the other side is like one, um, one and, and, and a quarter and I can already see that this guy <laughs> this, <laughs> this guy <laughs> but but will be there to support them and, and ensure that um, they choose a path that you know is, is in line with what they like because you can turn anything into a business I mean TikTok just came through recently yeah. but people have turned that into a business, business yeah. so if you say to your kid don't play games don't there, there, there's a, there, there are people who are making money from gaming yeah Gaming, playing yeah. games. Yeah. And we've got parents, our parents, who, when you sit on a TV or play on a phone, they were always shouting at you. Don't do They're that. Don't that. Yeah. You know? Mm. But now, there's so many things that can be turned into a career. So you can't impose on the, new, the next generation to say, this is how life is. This is how they own the journey in life. And I- even the conversation of school, should they go to school or should they not go to If my daughter decides at grade 12 that, you know what, this... Put it on the table. What what can you do if you yeah. if I allow you to leave grade twelve? What is it that you're gonna do? Allow that to you know have a conversation on that, but let's not impose on a, the journey that the kids are going to take because the the world is changing on its own and we don't know what's gonna be happening in the next twenty years. I, I like that very much. You know, uh, I I'm I'm hoping that I catch up with you in twenty <laughs> years time. <laughs> you know, to see how things have gone. You know, on that front. And I think, uh, you know, where we end off the conversation with all our bright new heavies, I think it's going to help us to tie in everything that you've, uh, you know, spoken about today, um, you know, as well as, you know, family and, you know, the four things that you mentioned uh, just now about what you, you know, the areas that you want to get into. And that is, what do you want your legacy to be? Yeah. I think, yeah, um, um, my legacy, I want just to be the guy that, inspired people yeah. to chase their dreams yeah. um, to be the guy that you know people saw starting things from the bottom mm. not be driven by greed or any you know material things but someone who's just driven by a vision and driven by a conviction a conviction of what they believe they were brought uh, in this world for and I believe I was brought onto this world to inspire people motivate inspire encourage create jobs Mm. And, and, you know, I, I think my, I, I want my legacy to be of a guy that wasn't as fleshy, lived a very, you know, modest life. Even when the money starts flowing in, I mm. pray yes. to always remain the way I am today. Uh, yeah. um, because I think th- that is emp- empowering for me when I see people that are rich, rich, rich mm. and, you know, still wearing the simplest of clothes, still, still living, the, you know. Um, the, 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 the modest life. So I want to be, my legacy to be of a guy that just 
inspired the world by showing that you can build something from nothing and make it something and empower and empower people along the journey. So I just want to empower. All right. And inspire. Empower and inspire. and inspire. You know, that's uh, that's it. Uh, very interesting, very fascinating discussion uh, that we've uh, had with our brand new heavy for the month um, of September. That is uh, Lindo. Nice. Right. <laughs> the <laughs> <Munisi. brandy. laughs> you know, that's the brand. And, uh, you know, very fascinating just uh, getting in the first half um, conversation around how he got into business, uh, the career change, starting off in journalism, getting into PR, uh, but having a first business coming back into the working world and then uh, still having the wherewithal to decide that, no, I'm going to go back and try business again. And actually being in a place where four years later he's saying, I'm actually happy with, um, you know, where I am. And actually, one of the things that I find interesting is that he says, um, you know, going forward, he doesn't want to be tied down uh, by the areas that he's currently in. You know, wherever the market is going, um, you know, he's definitely going to go there. And it reminds me of something that uh, DJ Maporisa said. Uh, a couple of, uh, when people think about someone like Maporisa, uh, you think about uh, piano today. But when you go back, you know, guys, Maporisa made Wachukucha. That was like 10 years ago. And when you hear him talking, he says, I am, uh, I think he says, I am a wave rider. I can't remember the words he says, but he says, wherever the market is, I will ride that wave and I will do it well. And he's done it, you know, for more than a decade. Um, so, you know, we hope that, uh, you know, as you, you know, ride the waves, that things are also going to be going well. Before we let you go, how can people get in touch? How people can, how can people find, um, you know, your businesses? Uh, yeah. Give yeah. us those details. No, absolutely. So, as I've <coughs> outlined and you've mentioned correctly, my name is Lindo Munesi. Mm. Um, so you type you type exactly that, yeah. whether it be it on Google, they have be the, the, on social media, all social media platforms. It's Lindo Munesi on LinkedIn. Very important because we need to speak business conversations. So reach me on on LinkedIn uh, at uh, Lindo Munesi. Uh, Instagram. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Lindom Nisi, like my page on Facebook, everywhere. But also um, for the business side, you, you, you can just visit our website, uh, um, www.andura.co.za. It doesn't matter where you are, you can order on our website and we'll de deliver the products to you. So people must come and look at our products on our website and ensure that don't go with, don't, don't just live life without a toolbox. Don't do that. It's, it's not right. So get yourself a toolbox and you can get that on our website. You don't have to come to our stores. Get to the website and select the items that you need. So that should you have a problem that you need to tie down your light bulb or whatever you need to sort out, you, 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 you have it handy uh, to be able to do that. So that's how you reach us. All and right. thank you very much, guys, for having me. I really, really appreciate it. No, no, no. Thank you so much for being with us. I like that very much. You can't go through life without a toolbox of some sort <laughs> so that's been it uh, we were talking to Lindo Mnisi. uh you heard all the places that uh, you know you can uh, go and find him uh, thank you so much to him you know for being on the show today and uh, thank you uh, to our team in studio today to our technical producer uh, Quinch as well as uh, Slim Mnisi who oh wow Slim <laughs> CB, who is uh, you see I caught myself there uh, who is here with uh, with us in studio and uh, you know for finding uh, Lindo you know it's really been a, a great conversation so don't miss the business but same time same place next week now for more insight into the world of business coming up next we will be getting into some uh, hip hop uh, for the next two or so hours I've been um, Leo Mob Justice Kavasa and from the rest of the team it is good evening and take care You've been listening to the Business Buzz on Zone FM 88.1. Thursdays from 7 to 8 p.m. On your radio at 88.1 FM. Hear it. Feel it.